Hello, guys and gals. Me, Mudahar, coming at you with a mid-afternoon recording over here. Not exactly early morning, not exactly late as night, so it's a mix of both uh, tired Muda and a mix of uh, very active-minded Muda. So it's going to be an interesting episode, I see, as always. It's going to be... Um, it's going to be as random, no exact theme, but ladies and gentlemen, we've got a collection of websites we'll be looking through. I hope you have an amazing time. Let's go check out our very first website. Man, I'm getting, I'm getting kick-ass with these intros, dude. So here is la 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 Might have missed two or three laws or one above, but hey, that's okay. You are not a failure yet. Bounce back from bad grades with tutoring that really works, dude. Okay, that's great. That's an amazing ad, dude. I'll, I'll keep that in mind. Los Internet sec, Sensacion Americano dos Amigos. Did somebody break it on my head? Oh, whatever, dude. Who gives a shit? Amigos Grande. Makes sense? Nah. So this was a video on YouTube for about 10 fucking minutes, all right? Interesting stuff over here. It's, uh, it's a video of what appears to be fucking... I, I don't know. I don't know if this is some bullshit, you know, serial commercial LARPing something going on right now. But interesting stuff. They've got la 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 la. You can download the mobile ringtone below. Um, I don't think I want to get this la 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 ringtone, but you know, we'll 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 do what we can. Now, what's interesting to see is the recommended list. Okay, so it's got dream lights, night lights. It's got recommended. So these are recommended links. Free send SMS. Send fax internet. So it's pretty. It's pretty simple. Then you go all the way down to should I get a vasectomy? Wow, what a <laughs> what a fucking jump. What dog should I get? What pet should I get? What tattoo should I get? Again, we we went from the fucking dick cords being cut all the way down to simple shit like. Uh, what what kind of tattoo? Fuck, man. What kind, well, should I get a Shiba Inu or a fucking Chihuahua? Eye vision test online. Hazard test. English online test. Breakup quiz. General knowledge test. Should I get a divorce? <laughs> what the fuck? I feel like this is some jaded guy. Should I get a vasectomy? Should should I get a fucking divorce? And night lights. So we went back to the fucking night lights again. Let's let's go to the night lights real quick. Get get that shit shot out of the way. Apparently it's a, uh, it's, I guess an advertisement for night lights. And some of these are really fucking cool looking like, uh, actually the mirrored clock looks pretty cool. The jellyfish looks pretty awesome, dude. The switch lamp looks pretty generic. All right. Just gonna, Ooh, wow. The prices on some of these are fucking crazy. 130 bucks for a light. Nah, dude, I'll, 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 I'll stick, I'll stick to something reg. I'll stick to some basic shit. You know what I mean? But anyways, let's go to the should I get a vasectomy test because uh, once you read that, holy fuck, considering the snip or pushing your partner to get her tubes tied, are you ready for a vasectomy? Seeking permanent, effective contrast. Isn't there like a fucking tiny chance that you could still get like preggers even after a vasectomy? Like is there a little tiny chance or is it like 100%? Because like I would love to be the fly on the wall that goes to the guy that gets his dick cords cut but still ends up failing. That would be great, crazy, dude. Are you married or in a long-term relationship? Nah. How old are you? <laughs> well, 18 to 24. What concerns you about a vasectomy? I don't know. Is it going to fucking hurt? Because my dick's going to be cut. My, my, they're going to open up my ball sack. It's going to be scary. Do you have children already? Not that I know of. Does your partner wish to continue? I... <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, I, I don't know. No, no. Okay. No. Will pregnancy put your part? No. What's your current method? Um, the pullout method, dude. Do you believe vasectomy can be reversed? Not sure. Do you believe is a woman's respect? It's a joint, dude. There you go. Let's go. The SJW. Ad. Do you want the day off work? Oh, what? What? They'll write you some bullshit doctor note. Get out of here, dude. Get out of here. Okay, they're going to send me the results by email. Well, that was done for nothing. Okay, so apparently if you want to know if you should get your dick cords cut, this is the site for you. Let me see. What the fuck is a should I get a divorce quiz? Like this, this sounds, it's by the same fucking site. No, yeah, it's literally an umbrella term by the same site. Like what the fuck? Should I divorce him quiz? Oh, oh, it's, it's a, it's a him argument. It's not going to be a should I divorce her quiz? All right, what kind, what kind of bullshit is that? This is some blatant sexist shit. Okay, well, why is there no divorce calculator for the guy? All right, Jesus Christ. How often does your husband drink or do drugs? Oh, well, let's hope that fucking, let's hope the drugs is down to a minimum. Jesus. Yeah, dude, this is like some, this is some Dr. Phil shit, dude. I, I can't, dude. It's like, like, what is this, man? It's literally, it, it's, it's, it's Dr. Phil stuff, dude. It's so Dr. Phil shit. Get out of here, dude. Get out of here.
All right. Well, I, I'm not married to even be worrying about that quiz. Breakup qu- man. There's a lot of a lot of fucking a lot of couple shit in this man, and it's for the negative. <laughs> Jesus Christ, dude. Jesus. I mean, I guess if it, I guess if you're of weak like constitutions, this is the only way to help. Let's go to the hazard test, dude. Is a free virtual driving hazard test. Okay. It requires Adobe Flash. Yeah, I'm not really risking myself. Thank you very much. But all right, there's a if if you're scared of driving cars in a hazardous situation, there's your fucking test. Okay, let's just go to what dog should I get? Okay, gee, that's harmless. Which one of the following dog breed traits is important to you? It's small and cute, dude. They better be small and they better be fucking cute. What is the main reason you want a dog for companionship? How often would you be prepared to brush? Uh, let's let's go monthly, okay? I've never owned a dog. You fortnight every two weeks. Will the door be? Will the dog be indoor? Motherfucker, both. Okay, the dog's gonna see. Dog's gonna breathe in the oxygen, the fresh outside my house. It's gonna cuddle with me on my couch. How often would you be prepared to walk your dog? I don't know. Fucking daily. Make it. Make it a thing. Will you de? <laughs> yeah. How about you just? That's the most random way to put it. Desex your dog. How about you say spayed and neutered? What is this fucking? What? Yeah, sure. We'll desex the dog. Have you? No, I have not. Will someone be with the dog during the day? No. What color dog do you like the most? Uh, honestly, honestly, dude, I like I like the brown dogs. Can you deal? Yeah, fuck, fuck the brown. Can you deal with drool and slobber? Maybe a little. I mean, I don't want to be covered in it. Do you prefer dog breeds with pointed or motherfucker? Okay, go go floppy. Okay, I like floppy. What movie dog do you like the most? Toto, motherfucker. Okay, Toto's the shit. What kind of budget do I have to feed the dog? Fuck, I don't know. Go nothing. Okay, I don't. I don't know. I don't know what the accurate description of it is. How how does your partner family feel about a dog? I don't. Man, he's not existent. Uh, how often would you train your dog? <laughs> not often. <laughs> not often. What is this? So I should get the laboratory retrieve. Oh, so it's good. Man, fuck you. You guys are sending this shit to my email. The fuck am I going to do, okay? I'm not going to give you my email address. You know what it is? It's a simple way for you to get a fucking email address out of people. That's all it is. It's just a way for them to dig your emails out, bro. I know this. Some scammy shit. Let's get out of here and go to something else, dude. So this one's actually really fucking interesting. Um, this game has sort of resurfaced on the dank web and in reality again. So for those of you guys who don't know, there's this game called The Blue Whale, which apparently is cause for a lot of suicides, uh, two at least in Dubai. But of course, a lot of criminal investigations prove that it isn't. Um, I've heard about this, like, throughout a couple months, like, uh, that it's been happening, but, I mean, it's one of those things that sort of surface and comes out every now and then. I don't know exactly, uh, what the reality of it is. I'm sure there's a lot of videos on YouTube that you can try to find, and, uh, in fact, over here, Blue Whale Game. Uh, it's the Blue Whale Challenge is a social network phenomenon uh, from 2016 that claimed to exist in several countries, despite no cases being confirmed. I just hear about it. The game reportedly consists of a series of tasks assigned to players by administration over a 50-day period, with the final challenge requiring the player to commit suicide. Um, social concerns, arrests, uh, reactions. So yeah, you can see it's happening in like Brazil, Bulgaria, China, Egypt, India, Iran, it's Italy, Russia, Tunisia, and the United States. Um, I guess that's over there, but apparently uh, it's a 50 days of promoting mental health and well-being. The choking game? Motherfucker, I'm too old for this shit. What? But yeah, this is a game that apparently leads to suicide. Again, none of it's con confirmed, but it's just edgy, like, internet spooky stuff. So let's read into it. The Blue Whale game, Russian... Sini Kit? I think that's what it is. Sini Kit? Also known as Blue Whale Challenge is a social network phenomenon dating from 2016 that is claimed to exist in several countries. Despite no cases being confirmed, the game reportedly consists of a series of tasks assigned to players by administration over a 50-day period, with a final challenge requiring the player to commit suicide. Blue Whale first appeared in May 2016 in an article in a Russian newspaper, Noyava Novaya Gazeta, that linked many unrelated child suicides to memberships of Group F57, or the Russian-based... VK on on Tacti social network? Yeah, the, Facebook's for different worlds, man. Different strokes for different folks. A wave of moral panic swept Russia. 
However, the piece was later criticized for attempting to make a causal link where none existed, and none of the suicides were found to be a result of the group activity. So, these guys prove, these guys basically aren't, I guess, trying to be edgy, edgy as fuck. They're just saying that this game was blamed for something that really wasn't even the reality of the situation. So, you are welcome to play the Blue Whale. No, fuck the updates. So, what's interesting about this is, you can actually go and download the APK file, which is available for Android. So this is the Blue Whale APK, and if you go over to it, you should be able to get a download punch at some point over here. So right over here, it's actually, if I go to download, it's got a 33.9 megabyte Android APK file. So for those of you who don't know what an APK file is, um, when you, when you're on the Android devices versus iOS, you can actually load applications just by installing APK. So you don't ever have to, uh, I guess, go through the app store. You can just download APKs. Um, if you use any third party stores on the Android front, then you're probably going to get this kind of stuff. But regardless, I would not recommend downloading this because I don't know what's in 33 megabytes of an Android APK file. It could just be a game. Um, it could be an edgy piece of game or whatever. Um, the only reason I wouldn't touch it is in case it has some like weird fucking photos or like, you know, child shit. I don't know. I wouldn't bother. Or it could just basically be more realistically a piece of malware to infect your Android phone. So if you're really into this, I would not recommend it. Probably find a YouTube video of it, read up on it, try to find it somewhere on the clear web with actual instructions and go hit that. But I would not recommend installing an APK that you found on the deep web onto your fucking actual cell phone. You could potentially have your data stolen. You could potentially have some pretty nasty times with your, your phone might get ransomware right on it. So be very fucking careful if you're an Android user and you're even thinking of it. But yeah, this is a there's a whole site that I swear I saw before, but it went down and it went missing in like a matter of hours. So maybe this site might go down after I'm done recording. I wouldn't know, but this is the Blue Whale game in its entirety available to download off the deep web. Again, be careful. It's still available though. Let's go somewhere else, dude. Uh, I want to get away from the suicide train. Jesus. Ant Miner S9 PSU in stock are miners with very little use in their original PSU stolen in Iceland. Oh man, that's what I love about the dank web. Not just buying stuff, but buying stolen stuff. Almost like you're on a little fucking Amazon.com of illegal goodies. <laughs> oh boy. Each one has a net return of more than a hundred euros per month. Okay. Are shipped from the EU for obvious reasons of anonymity, face-to-face -face deals, and non-anonymous payments are not allowed. Only Bitcoin, Bitcoin Private, or Monero expected. Bitcoin escrows accepted for orders over 5,000 euros. So apparently what's happening is these guys are selling ant miners. For those of you who don't know what an ant miner is, it's a little box. It's a, it's a specially designed uh, computer system that's basically... It basically uh, allows you to optimize a lot of the hashing rates for Bitcoin mining. So I, I'm not a huge expert on what the ant miner really does, but all I really know is that it is a device specifically created to mine for Bitcoin. Right now, if you're a Bitcoin miner, this is probably one of the more effective ways to mine your Bitcoins, right? Because I believe you can stick like GPUs directly into these things and then you hook, the, you connect them, cluster them, and then you connect them to a master system and then you can just operate all of them through it. And these systems basically are the most energy efficient versions of mining Bitcoins. Now, in my opinion, mining Bitcoins has become very, like, it's not as lucrative as it really is. For one, mining Bitcoin has become tougher as the years have passed. Uh, obviously, when the Bitcoins first started, the problems that the blockchain had to be solved with were very easy. And then as time and time passed, it requires more and more processing power to keep Bitcoin running. And with that, the whole prospect of mining is sort of dying down, not only with Bitcoin's value dropping, but with the hash rates getting more difficult, it ends up becoming a currency that most miners lose money on trying to capture. The only way you can make money off of mining Bitcoin right now is if you, A, have access to very little power. So you don't have to worry about this stuff. But even then, you're still worrying about the wear and tear on your devices. So you either have very little power little cost of power or you're a company like or you're a firm like JP Morgan's which runs basically the banking institutions of the United States uh and you have that level of fucking support and infrastructure that you can actually mine to such a large level that it becomes profitable and sustainable uh, but for the average person like you or me, uh, this is just a fucking money pit. Anybody that tells you mining is going to be the get-rich-quick scheme, 
um, is using you as this game. So they tell you to join a pool with them. Like if, if any, if anybody tells you can make a million bucks a day on mining, just join their pool with your own gear. They're fucking scamming you. Um, that is a very common thing to happen. Look it up. I'm going to keep it where it's at right there. If you want me to talk about it, I'll probably talk about it at some point. But anyways, and these guys are selling each unit for 865 euros and all available are at 500 euros each, 100 for 62,000 euros. Now, if I look at the ant miners actual price, um, let's go, let's go look it up. Ant miner is uh, ant miner S9, right? So the ant miner S9, if I look it up right now off of new egg itself, this is brand new. It's an ASIC BTC mining, uh, mining machine. It's for $4,700. Um, now, there's other places like DHgate that are selling it for like 9000 I don't know why that's like double the price. But you've got 4700 bucks, and it's got a pretty decent hash rate. And if you look at the – if you, well, let's just look at the price, the actual official price. Antminer S9. Yeah, it's $3,000 for the Antminer S9. That's probably US, right? And that comes with 14 tera, tera hashes. I think that's what it is. Yeah, I think this is what, that's a hash rate calculation. And the thing is, this is a fucking fraction. So, the, but apparently they are stolen. So they say they're not a scam. Apparently they might be fucking stolen. I'm not exactly sure. But if you're walking into something like this, I'm going to tell you this much right now. Be very careful. This seems like another scam that has popped up just to freak the fuck out and cash in on gullible motherfuckers. Uh, are you a scam? I accept escrow. Why are they cheap? Uh, the stolen miners, no way to trace it. Very easy. Urgent liquidity. That's why they're not sold here. If they're stolen, I guess maybe you're getting a stolen miner. It's all right, but I wouldn't recommend it over here. Uh, the price seems very lucrative, but even for a stolen miner, man, for something that's like three grand, this dude could have at least charged at least 50% of what the product was. This is less than that. So yeah, it looks very sketchy for me. Very sketchy right now. When they run out, they'll close the page. So he's got about 520 units that are available. Again, I don't know, dude. I don't know how fucking, I don't know how viable or valuable this is. In less than five months, you've recovered the investment. This to me... Seems very weird. I wouldn't recommend it, but it is what it is. It's one of these illegal buy shops online. Be careful when buying stuff like this and just be smart with your money. Let me said, I'm going to back out of this and go to something else. The Georgia Guidestones. On one of the highest hilltops in Albert County, Georgia stands a huge granite monument. Engraved in eight different languages on the four giant stones that support the common capstone are ten guides or commandments. That monument... That monument is alternatively referred to as the Georgia Guidestones, or the American Stonehenge. Though relatively unknown to most people, it is an important link to the occult hierarchy that dominates the world in which we live. The origin of that strange monument is shrouded in mystery because no one knows the true identity of the man or men who commissioned its constructions. So when I was in college, one of the classes that I had was a conspiracy theory class. It was one of the electives. And the only reason I picked it was because the only other electives were like really like bullshit ones, uh, something to do with humanities or whatever the fuck. But one of my electives was um, this, uh, conspiracy theories. And I remember my capstone presentation in that class uh, was talking about the Georgia Guidestones. So I actually know a fair bit about the Georgia Guidestones before we go into it. Uh, I probably forgot a whole bunch of it, but let's go look into it. So yeah, anyways, this is like, a fucking set of tablets which contains instructions for, like, the New World Order when it hits. And nobody really knows. So, yeah, let's read more into it. Um, the story is known, all that is known for certain is in 1979, a well-dressed, articulate stranger visited the office of Elberton Granite Finishing Company and announced that he wanted to build an edifice to transfer a message to mankind. He identified himself as R.C. Christian, but it soon became apparent that was not his real name. He said that he represented a group of men who wanted to offer direction to humanity, but to date, almost two decades later, no one knows who R.C. Christian really was or the names of those he represented. Several things are apparent. The messages engraved in the Georgia Guidestones deal with four major fields, governing, population, environment, and spirituality. It's got to be a joke by the Elberton Granite Finishing Company, dude. A way to drum up something, bro. I, I, come on. When you work with granite all day, you got to come up with clever ways to keep yourself entertained, dude. So anyways, let's look at the message. So these are what's on the Guidestone, right? These are the Ten Commandments 
that are on this guide stone for how the world should be. So one of them is maintain humanity under 500 million in perpetual balance with nature. We've already fucked that one up. We're overpopulated, motherfucker. <laughs> All right, there's plenty of us. We fuck like bunnies. Guide reproduction wisely, improving fitness and diversity. Oh, create a diverse planet, if you will. You know, well, we've already fucked up the diversity, dude. I'm pretty sure my kind, my Indian kind, are running amok, okay? We, we pretty much dominated population in the world, dude. After us, it's the squigglies just north. It's probably somebody who's going to watch this and be like, Muda, you're a fucking massive. How can you say? Whatever, dude. Whatever. It's the dank web, okay? I'm reading commandments onto the new world order. Unite humanity with a living new language. I like English. Thank you very much, okay? All right. But whatever, I'll be willing to learn a new, cooler language. Rule passion, faith, tradition, and all things with tempered reason. Pfft, doesn't happen. Reason in today's world? What are you, high? Protect people and nations with fair laws and just courts. Never gonna happen, dude. Let all nations rule internally, revolving external disputes in a world court. Okay, that kind of happens, but yet we're still cunts about it. Avoid petty laws and useless officials. Petty laws? Like, which one? Not sleeping in your bathtub in Michigan? That one? Yeah, that's pretty retarded law. Balance person. How did that law even come about? What the fuck? Anyways, balance personal rights with social duties. Prize truth, beauty, love, seeking harmony with the infinite. Be not <laughs> a cancer on the earth. Leave room for nature. Whoo! Have you seen Asia? Have you seen how fucking populated? Isn't that the thing in, like, Hong Kong? There's, like, not even a fucking inch of dirt left? Yeah, na nature can go fuck itself in that part of the world. Though over here in Canada, we got some nice-ass forests. You should all come check it out, okay? As, as that, this is sponsored by the Travel Bureau of fucking Canada. Not really, dude. Not at all. You know, you know what's up in Canada? Snow. And lots of it, dude. Snow and wheat. That's all we, that's all we really got. There's a couple cities. But it's just snow and wheat. Lots of wheat. Boy, I'm really making Canada sound appealing. I'm an asshole. Li limiting the population of the earth to 500 million will require the extermination of nine tenths. Okay, yeah, this is the weird thing. They wanted to exterminate motherfuckers. It's not happening, dude. Well, you want to nuke us? That, that, that requires nuking the fucking world. 90% of the world needs to be destroyed. That's some fucking Fortnite story shit. The American Stonehenge World Court foresees the current move to create an international criminal court, world government, blah, 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 message, and Yoko Ono, the widow of John Lennon, was recently quoted as referring to saying, I want people to know about the stones. We're headed towards a world where we might blow ourselves up and maybe the globe will not exist. It's a nice time to reaffirm ourselves. Well, Yoko Ono, uh, I'm sorry that you lost your husband, John Lennon, but I don't support nuking 90% of the world, or at least exterminating us in whatever way you see fit. What is the true significance? Why is the message so important? Dramatically reducing the population, killing us, promoting environmentalism, hippiness. Actually, you know, the environment's very needed. Okay. We need, we need, of course we need the fucking environment. You can't be an asshole about that. Dude. Anyways, with, with, instead of my green talk again, let's go to the third one. Establishing a world government, lizard people, promoting a new spirituality, New Age religions, man. New Age religions, dude. Always gotta fucking love them, dude. Always, got, always gotta love your New Age religious stuff. Certainly, the group that commissioned the Georgia Guidestones is one of many similar groups working together towards a new world order, a new world economic system. So yeah, these are the Guidestones, and these are all the messages over here. So they're written in, like, I think multiple languages. They're written in, um, they're written in English, I think Japanese or Chinese. Uh, I think Chinese, not Jap one of the one of the Asian scriptures, and a couple other languages. So they also drilled this hole in the center stone so that the North Star could be visualized through it at any moment. This is one of the several requirements stipulated by R.C. Christian. Maybe R.C. Christian had a fucking OCD problem, and this is why R.C. Christian created these guide stones. Because maybe R.C. Christian just fucking hated the world. Maybe he wanted 90% of the popular. Maybe R.C. Christian predicted how cancerous the world would become. And maybe in some ways, bastard's right, not really. I don't support destroying 90% of the world population or this new age religious crap. Let's back out of the Guidestones and go to something else. Hello, guys and gals. Me, Mudahar, with a 37-second video, well below our average by a couple seconds, average being 45 seconds. 
And it's great when you start off the video with a resolution rivaling that of Roblox. And it's even better when you have this fucking Ringu level bitch right over here. Okay, you have Samara from the ring. And you have a resolution that can be counted on one fingernail. So with the 37 second length video, I'm going to fucking bite the bullet and just hit play and see where we sort of stay at this point. So sit with me, relax, let's see how this can go, okay? So apparently she's in front of a highway, uh, a fucking railing. If this bitch gets hit on the highway, I'm not going to have a good time. Let's go hit play. What the fuck? Okay, what? Is she lifting? What the fuck is this? Is she walking or like? Is it? Is this? In, is this in Brazil? Is that Portuguese? What the fuck? <laughs> what the hell is this? It's like it's a woman in a dress. She's just walking. Where? No, she's still on the road. That that was like a lighting shift. What the fuck? Is that a thirty-seven second video of? What? What was that? You guys see that? Hold on. No, 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 no. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. That's like the, the lighting of a car driving by. It's like she's straight lifting into the air, but she's, it's like an isometric shot. What the hell am I watching? And then you like go further here and then she's, what is going on here? What? What is this? <laughs> what the fuck am I watching, dude? This is some fucking weird shit. Okay. Alright, so, first of all, I have a problem with these kind of videos in the first place. Let me, let me explain what my problems are. First of all, if th this, this obviously must be a troubled woman, okay? I don't understand why, assuming this is like some fucking ghostly, weird, like, haunted shit, because she's dressed up like Samara from The Ring, okay? That's what it is. She's got the long hair, she's got the nice white dress, but clearly it's a fucking lady. It's clearly somebody, and over here you can see she raises, like, a hand, so maybe she's, like, hailing for a fucking car. But, like, or she's pointing at motherfuckers. No, she's straight pointing at something and walking. What the hell? Okay, so she's in a dress. Obviously too long for her. But basically what's going on over here is it's like an isometric shot. And what I find really odd about this is that there's two ways this can go. Okay, either this is a fucking ghost and she's clearly floating into the fucking air like Jesus or something. Which is weird enough, like, the, you can see the arm being down again, like, clearly this is some fucking, like, ghost being lifted into the air going to heaven, and if that's the case, hallelujah, I'm so glad God is accepting this, this fine ghost up into the heavens, or the more logical solution, okay, this is what I believe, she's obviously mentally disturbed, okay, this woman's obviously mentally disturbed, she's pointing at people and walking towards them in open traffic, on a highway of no things, an open road, and you know what's happening? These motherfuckers, listen. Jigabody? Chalango? Is that is that jump? Is it is it is this Indian by any chance? Whatever, dude. Regardless, these motherfuckers are just watching this distressed person, okay, on the road. You should stop them. They're in traffic, okay? Pull them out. Screaming is not gonna help. But what's really also odd about this is, wait, what the fuck? Yo, this is weird. Look at this now. Look at, look at this for a second. This is like some weird CGI now. Look at that. You can sort of start seeing through it. There's like two arms. She's looking at people. This gotta be CGI, dude. This has gotta be something off. This is confusing. Why is it that we can never get ghost footage, but these motherfuckers are pulling off some of the weirdest ghost footage that I can find? It doesn't help that I'm watching this on like one, like 50p. But it also doesn't help the fact that, like, it just looks really weird. Like, it, now, now I've gone into, like, three things. Is this a blob? Is this a new species of animal that we found? You can even see the flowing hair. What the hell is this? It's like, it, it what? <laughs> what the fuck am I looking at? You can kind of see how it looks like a little ducky, too, with a little beaky-style silhouette. Anyways... There's two theories I have on this, one of them being very morbid, one of them being very beautiful. I'm going to stick to the morbid side, and if it is the morbid side, please don't record people who are obviously distressed in traffic. Grab them and take them out of traffic. 
That being said, um, I'm confused. I'm going to leave you all to assess what's happening in the rest of this. Let's go to a different site or place. Fuck. Oh my God. Surviving 2012. Ladies and gentlemen, we are, uh, we are looking at the survival of 2012. Now, if you look at the red, with the exception of the blog, the site is an archive from December 2012. There was obviously no global cataclysm in 2012. Uh, that's pretty obvious. We live in the year 2018. Uh, look at your hands. Are you alive? Yeah, no, nothing happened in 2012. So 2012 could end up being nothing, or it could be truly a shit hit the fan doomsday. Dude, this was such a fucking cringy event. I made a live stream back in the day where I played Majora's Mask about this shit, and it was beyond cringeworthy, dude. Um, there was people who genuinely believed the world would fucking end on December 21st, 2012. In fact... One of my favorite game franchises, Assassin's Creed. Assassin's Creed 3 made this a fucking plot point. There was a whole movie called 2012. Don't fucking watch it. It was garbage that existed, all right? And uh, it turned out to be shit, from what I gather. It turned out to be utter shit, all right? These, uh, basically it was a plot point. People cashed in on the idea that the world was going to end. You spend some... I think at this point there were also reports of people spending their whole fucking life savings waking up on December 22nd, wishing they had enough money for a fucking 9mm Beretta or some shit, hoping to fucking escape the terrible decisions they made the other day. Um, but yeah, this was, uh, this was a thing, dude. 2012. So let's look at what people back in the day, let's look at a time capsule thing, dude. The long, ca man, it's interesting, because 2012 was when I made my channel, dude. I made my channel the year the world was gonna die. Ooh, booey. The long count calendar of the ancient Mayans ended on December 21st, 2012. There isn't much information regarding what the Mayans thought would occur in 2012. Yeah, because the fucking Mayans, uh, post-it calendar, you know, the one that they flipped, it was just ending. I bet the Mayans just made a new calendar at that point, dude. But the consensus of opinion is that there will be a great change. To some people, this means a positive, spiritual change. Others, like myself, consider that a catastrophic event may have been predicted. And it might mean the end of the world as we know it. Okay. So, end of the world, given another six months. Uh, at least. I know that many people are thinking, yet another doomsday prophet trying to milk it a little bit more. Nothing could be further from the truth. I don't want a tragic result. Thank you, okay? Thank you! You know how many fucking people are like, Man, I wish the world would end. I wish the zombie apocalypse would happen. God, I hope we get nuked. Motherfucker, everyone who says that, you were the most emo shit in the world. I'm so glad there's somebody on the internet who's like, No, I want the world to live. I enjoy breathing. I enjoy, I enjoy my life. You know what? I enjoy breathing too, so thank you. Thank you very much. I agree with you. Let me know in the comments if you like breathing and you, and you like life. It's going to be a lot of edgy comments like, fuck life. Anyways, it's not a case of being proven right or wrong, be it for myself or the ancient Mayan civilization. For me, it's about tricking, fooling, convincing people into preparing for the worst. S asshole. Regardless of 2012, it is probably the best thing that you, uh, that you will ever do for yourself and your family. Obviously, the shock and awe of December 21st, 2012 has passed, so I won't be putting as much effort into the mission from now. But hopefully enough people have become preppers to make my prior work wor worthwhile. Yeah, dude, I own like seven bunkers underground. 2012 solved. Many ancient cultures were capable of watching the skies over a long period of times and recording their observations. Auroras at low altitudes are very rare. Less than once per lifetime, ancient cultures, unable to explain their presence, could have been very scared and concerned when auroras were observed. Yeah, people back then were spooked about the tiniest of things. By noting auroral... Activity over centuries or even millennia, a repeating pattern might have been discovered. Of the various ways an ancient culture could have warned of the next bout of low-altitude auroras, one is a calendar with a definitive end date, such as the Long Count Calendar of the Ancient Maya. Because the calendar was in continuous use, the end date was not forgotten. Auroras might have just been scary lights in the sky for ancient cultures, but they can kill us! Low-altitude auroras only appear during the most massive solar storms. The same storms can take out power grids of modern cities, structures, countries closest to the poles with the oldest uh, grids at the no most risk. That includes the USA and take months or even years to repair. That would equal millions of deaths. Uh, survive 20... Oh, so this is a book plug, I guess. It's great. I'll, I'll go for that. And is the world going to end in 2012? There is zero scientific evidence that anything will happen, but there are numerous things that could be easily threatening the human species in the year 2012, such as geomagnetic reversal, solar storms, or supernova, or something more intimate like a flu pandemic or a nuclear war. Whew. 
Any prediction you hear about 2012, even on the site, are pure speculation. Solar storms, NASA has acknowledged that even the power grids of North America could go down if Earth is hit by a geomagnetic storm like the Carrington event of 1859. The grids of Europe, Russia, China, Austra Australasia... That's actually a thing. I'm a fucking idiot, because I, I used to think that was a misspelling. But Australasia and South Africa are also at risk. The solar cycle is about to peak, and the governments have failed to prepare. Imagine a world without electricity. That's why the Amish prep for this shit, man. They know. They know exactly how to live. Candles and horse manure. A comet. NASA has been making plenty of videos and articles debunking 2012. Yeah, well, NASA also says the world is a globe, and that's full of lies, okay? All right, Jesus Christ, you fucking globe heads. Calling us flat tards? Anyways, ancient advanced cultures like the Maya had one advantage over modern science, the length of their existence. All right, well... This guy seems to not have a screw loose. Um, he wants the world to live, but he brings some fairly decent points. You know, if like a geomagnetic storm were to hit us and like the power grids were gone for months or even years, yeah, we'd be kind of fucked. Do you understand how much like electric, like we need like our electric get grid is important? Um, I think that the, the logic is like if you, use, if you lose electricity, say for like a week, right? Like if we lost electricity in North America for like seven days, day one or two would be fine. You know, day one or two would be a nuisance. Day three or four, it's a nuisance there as well. Day five and six, you know, we're entering the point where we're running out of the batteries and UPSs that we've stored. So things like hospitals, basic institutions that we need to survive are reaching a point where it's like, uh, power better come back on or else things are going to start looking a little hairy. You know, people are going to be dying in hospitals without any, you know, equipment. Day seven, eight, nine, you know, we're going to have people who are running out of basic resources, foods, basic transportations, and the whole grid's going to break down. And like two, three weeks later, you're looking at some Shaun of the Dead shit, dude. So that is pretty scary. And if the world ever goes out like that or plunges into chaos because of it, it's the more logical situation. But, uh, yeah, anyways, um, interesting stuff over here. It's great to be, great to feel nostalgic about the world ending with 2012. But instead of keeping up with the whole 2012 tradition over here, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to back out and see a world that does not involve pure spooks anymore. All right, let's go to something a little more tame, ladies and gentlemen. Well, that was uh, this week's Dank Web Browsing. Interesting stuff indeed, ladies and gentlemen. We've got what appeared to be a weird, weird, weird ghost photography and I would assume Brazil, or could be India, I'm not sure. Um, ways the world could end, guidelines for the world after it has ended, and, uh, well, a website that teaches me a lot of quizzes, or at least gives me a lot of quizzes that I'm just not ready to take yet because I have no frame of reference. But I think that can be said for most of the sites over here. They were weird. This was a weird episode. Ladies and gentlemen, let me know how you thought about this episode in the comment section below. Telegram me. Send it to my pager if you had any problems. If you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Dislike it if you dislike it. This is me, Mudahar, and I am out.